So I want you to think back when you had to write your first paper. Do you remember what typeface you used? This is my old college English paper. And guess what? It's written in Times New Roman. This is the Mueller report, a government document. President Trump says he's f***ed in it. It is also written in Times New Roman. Times New Roman is the default typeface for everything we see, from term papers in Congress to movie posters and books. But why is Times New Roman the default typeface? The way we think about typefaces today was not how it has always been. Movable type goes back to 1040 AD in China, but the first repeated typefaces for the masses was this, created in the 1450s by Johannes Gutenberg in Mainz, Germany, between 1450 and 1455. They're not exactly sure when the first Gutenberg Bible was released to the public. This movable type was the first typeface that could be duplicated many times. Printed by way of the printing press, a device used to duplicate things many times the same every time, revolutionary during this period. And the first typefaces were meant to look hand-drawn, to imitate the scribes. When the printing press came out, it involved physically cutting each letter to be set into a block to show each word, line, and page, allowing itself to be duplicated the same way every time. Before, scribes or people who would just copy the text would have to rewrite text by hand, a long and expensive process. Now today, typefaces and unlimited fonts are just a click away. Times New Roman was a typeface born out of anger. It all started with this man, Stanley Morrison. Morrison was a freelance consultant for a famous newspaper in London, The Times London. The newspaper at the time was using a typeface that Mr. Morrison did not like. Mr. Morrison wrote an article in the Times London newspaper itself, talking about how he disliked the typeface that the newspaper was currently using. He thought the typeface did not match the characteristics of the paper itself. The old typeface, according to Mr. Morrison, was hard to read and did not look professional. He became upset because of how the newspaper physically looked. After the article came out, the London Times owner took Mr. Morrison up on his offer and commissioned him to create a typeface for the newspaper. Mr. Morrison began to work with the typesetter who had physically cut the pieces for him. Mr. Morrison and his typesetter used plan Plantain as a base to start designing Times New Roman around. They knew that the typeface had to be easy to read. It also had to fit more words on a page so it was more economical. There's only so much room on a newspaper. This is Stephen Heller. He's written a plethora of books on design, and he's an expert in this field. And Times Roman was based on the idea that there would be so many words to a column. Uh, newspapers, you know, were not generous about white space. So they needed to get as much packed in as possible. Does its job well as one of those uh, kind of crystal goblet typefaces. It's uh, seen but not heard. They designed Times New Roman as a solution. Times New Roman is a narrower typeface. It has small spaces between each letter, which is contrasted by wide portions of the letter themselves, allowing them to stand out in print. At the end of the day, Times New Roman is a typeface designed to be read on paper. That is why it was created, and that is what it does best. The United States government used to use the typeface Courier, which is a shorter font. It also has less contrast between the letters themselves, making it harder to read. And if you're about to read something from the US government, it helps if it's easy to read. Mr. Heller says typefaces are like speaking with an accent. Designers, that's their language. So, you know, if you were talking to me uh, with a certain accent, let's say, I might respond negatively to it. Uh, you know, there are certain accents like, you know, you, you watch a war movie on TV and the German accent mm. is always grating, although I kind of like it. Um, but that's what type is. It, 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 it itself is a voice, presents the words of an idea. Uh, but the face, the style of the face, the serifs, the design of the ascenders and descenders, these are the accents, these are the visual nuances, but at the same time, they're the sound of the typeface. Mm. And, you know, you can like it or hate it. So choosing your language in which you wrote was the first impression you had on someone. Choosing a typeface that was known to all would make it seem like you could speak to anyone. Welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Schiffe, and this is Gary Kildall. Gary, I have some examples here of printed documents, the kinds of things normally you think you have to go to a printer and pay a lot of money to get, but these were all created on a personal computer. Times New Roman is economical. It is a relatively cheap typeface to print out compared to other typefaces. 
Back in the day when printers started becoming a thing, they were very expensive. So one had to be economical in their printing habits. Can everyone see this? I know the type's a little small, but it's really the best we could do. If your word processing looks like word processing, and your graphics aren't too graphic, you need a Canon laser printer to make the printed page look better for as little as $2,800. And since it was so costly for printers, people began looking at what could save them money when they had to print out documents. And it's because it was so costly that even the US government got smart and changed from their default font of Courier to Times New Roman in 2004. Quote, it takes up almost exactly the same area on the page as Courier New 12, while offering a crisper, cleaner, more modern look, end quote. Which is why the Mueller report from the US government is written in Times New Roman. In fact, all US bills are written in Times New Roman. Shown here is a word count that fits on one page. Times New Roman wins against other popular fonts, showing that this typeface can print out more words for less cost compared to alternative typefaces, Courier and Helvetica, so it is more legible than Courier and cheaper to print out than Helvetica. It was also right around this time that more students began writing by computers than writing by hand or typewriter. There's a lot more interest from teachers now and they're starting to use computers within their classroom and a lot of different students in Palo Alto are now starting to use word processing and some other types of programs, data management kinds of programs to help them so that the computer is becoming more of a tool for them. Most computers released around this time included Times New Roman due to its wide licensing deals with Monotype and Lonotype. Licensing is a huge way to get your type out there. If it's not available to the masses, it can't be used. I'm Steve Jobs from Apple Computer. We're very glad to be here tonight. Now, you know that over 70% of all the computers used in education are Apple's? And uh, that makes us feel really good. And uh, they're telling us that Macintosh is the ideal college computer. So we think you're going to see lots of Macintoshes on college campuses. With Mac right, even though there's a lot of features, they're all very easy to use. You can also, however, go up and change the style. You see that right there? That's a typeface called New York, designed by Susan Kerr in 1983. It's a spitting image of Times New Roman. Windows version 3.1 in 1991 had Times New Roman. So this was the first time that you had a wide selection of typeface choices, which included Times New Roman and its twin, New York, getting in front of users and getting them used to the typeface. Eventually, New York would be replaced with Times New Roman, and it became widely available on Mac and Windows operating systems from then on out. Times New Roman isn't the prettiest typeface out there, and it's not the most popular. And in fact, most people, if asked, tend to favor Helvetica over Times New Roman. But since it's not licensed by Google, no one can use Helvetica when using Google Docs. But if you scroll down past the H's, you'll find the Times New Roman typeface looking right at you. This creates a gap in the market. People write with what is legible, cheap, and familiar. Enter Times New Roman. So because Times New Roman was inexpensive to license, cheap to print in bulk, and highly legible, it became the default typeface on most word processing programs, like Microsoft Word and MacWrite. So an entire generation grew up using this typeface, not by choice, but because it was the font given to you to start with and what everyone came to be used to. So these days, Times New Roman is no longer the system default, but its impression on culture has made it an expressive design choice rather than an economic system default. So the default isn't always the best at everything, but it's usually the one with the least amount of drama. And thank you for watching today's video. I'm obviously a big fan of the Vox video channel. And so when I started this project, I wanted to see if I could do a video like them, but for our channel. So if you like this, share it with a friend. It helps convince Chris and Matt that we should do more videos like this in the future. So I just want to thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video. I think that's gonna be the winner.